Jamie Schmidt and today I'm going to do something I've been wanting to do for a while is give you guys a video on how to do something that is comes up every now and then and it's a tricky thing so I want to do this on the web so people might be able to to look at how I do it maybe discuss better ways and things like that um, but it is replacing mortise hint, uh, door hardware with cylinder hardware so this is the old style that used to go into the doors and it would be in a pocket in the door. Just slide right in and then this would be where your door would catch. And the newer style, which everyone sells, which is a lot less expensive and a lot more available, are the cylinder type. And what I'm going to do is show you how to get this out and replace it with this. And it goes in a couple of steps, so I'm going to hopefully walk you through it pretty straightforward and quickly so you can get an idea of whether you want to do this or not. So here we go. All right, so this is what we're looking at as far as the mortise being inside the door. You know, this is what we're looking at. I don't know if it's hard to see right here, but you can see this. This is what's inside the door right now. So this goes in this pocket right here, and the door handle goes straight through that piece right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start taking this hardware off. and. To do that, um, this is a part actually that's kind of tricky, and believe it or not, it's just getting this thing off. And now you'll see right here that there's a set screw, and I'm going to go ahead and take that off, and then I'll start the video back up again, and I'll show you how to take the door handle off. Okay, so I've taken that set screw out. Sorry, it's a little close. I'm trying to do this two-handed here, or one-handed. And what people do is then they're thinking, oh, that's on there, I can pull it right off. But in most cases, <laughs> not like that one, <laughs> that was pretty bad. Uh, that was actually on there very poorly. Um, what you're gonna have is this threaded rod, and the way it's supposed to go is that this will, oh, hold on, this screws on to here. So you have to unscrew it. You cannot usually get that off, but this is uh, oh, this is all stripped out. Okay, so you have to unscrew it. So once you get it like this, you undo that set screw, you unscrew the doorknobs. I've seen people literally pull their hair out. They're pulling and they're pulling, and then they just don't figure it out. They just think that this is unscrews. It just unscrews. So that is step number one, and then you are left with the external hardware that is just screwed on. So we're gonna unscrew this, pop it off. It's just a little, you know, discussion plate kind of thing. And then we'll go ahead and take that off. We'll undo the two screws, one here, one here, and then we'll pop the mortise out. I'll show you how to get that out. Okay, the next part is taking the mortise hardware out. And the easiest way is this part right here. I'm going to put the, the screwdriver in this part of the hardware where the doorknob used to go. And I'll see if I can get this to work on the first try on this one. Should be able to. Just take a hammer, go on this side, put it in there. And hopefully you can see this here. It's hard to do this with one, just me here. And then give it a tap. Give it another tap and then you'll see that it's actually popped out. I'm gonna turn that a little bit. Oops, there we go. That this has actually come out a little bit. There we go. Get rid of this. There. And that's it. That's the hardware that comes out. So we've got this out of the door. Okay, so this is what we're left with after that comes out. And I forgot to show you what that little plate thing that, you know, little decorative plate part that comes off. It's just a thin piece. After the three screws come off, this just pops right off. Um, so what we're left with now is the hole where the mortise lock was. So what I've done is I've cut a bunch of blocks. And if you use three quarter inch wood, it's too thick. It wouldn't fit in there. These walls are very thin, and if you tried to jam a piece of three-quarter in here, it would probably crack out the wall, it would look uh, wide, and it just really wouldn't work well. So what I did is I ripped this down on my table saw down to just under five-eighths of an inch, which I found out is actually just a little too, too little. 
Um, it's got a little bit of play in there, a little bit much, but it still goes in quite snugly. So I'm, I made this the exact same size as the mortise lock minus a little bit so to make sure that I don't hit any rounded edges. So what I'm gonna do is slather this with glue and then put this inside the pocket where that mortise lock was. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Got the glue. And just literally just going to town on it. I mean, you can always wipe up the excess that comes out. And go ahead and slide that right in. I think it's all nice and in there. Put it in there. This to the top. There we go. And to finish this off, and this is a, this is kind of an important part. You want this to be flush with this door. And for many reasons, you want solid wood to be going into when you're putting in your next lock set. So in order to get that perfectly flush, the easiest trick I found is take an excess piece of your wood and just tap it. Until the wood stops. And that way you'll know that you're perfectly flush with this door. And that'll save you time as far as spackling and patchwork afterward. So, let's take a look at what we got right now. So, this is what it's gonna look like. So, it's not pretty right now, but you don't need it to be pretty. You want it also to be towards the top. So, you wanna close the gap at the very top as much as possible because this is where the strike, the, the hardware is gonna go into the door. So, you notice that it's full now. There's wood back there, so when we drill through this, it'll be uh, something solid for it to go into and it won't collapse the door once we, we tight, try to tighten it up. So this is phase one and there's one more step to it. What I'm going to do is I have to get about 14 of these doors done. So I'm going to go ahead and nail this here and here and here with short 5 8 inch nails that look like this. <laughs> like that and they're not going to go all the way through. They're just going to go through the door and into the wood. So this is the length of the screw. So it's only going to go about that far into it, but what it's going to do is it's going to lock it in place. And um, you'll see a little bit later on why. Uh, it does need a little bit of help once it's cut because uh, once we put in the lock hardware, we kind of detach the top part of this piece of wood from the lower half. And you need something holding that in place. Um, just a little bit more than the glue. And that's what these nails will do. All right, so I put a bunch of nails in here. Um, I think I got enough, <laughs> but uh, I'm noticing I'm going around where I think the hardware is going to go into here. I don't want to put nails there. The, the, the drill will go through it. The, uh, the thing will go through it. These little brad nails, but you know, why put the wear on the on the blade? So nail everywhere around it. And these holes are so small, you can just put some spackle over it, and when you paint, you won't even know that they were there. So these will hold this in place pretty well, I think. One more. Why not? <laughs> so and that's pretty much it. And you, I do this from both sides. So I got there and I did it a bunch of times over here too. So this will hold this in place and then we'll come back to this tomorrow after the glue set and I'll finish this up for you. All right, so here's a better example. I've removed this set screw and there's actually a, a lock on the back of this one because um, this is a closet door. There you go, you can see it. Uh, and what I'm talking about where it didn't go right before when I was in there is that people pull on this thing and they can't figure out, you know, hey, if I do that set screw, what's going on here? Is that you have to unscrew it. And it's real simple, but it's one of those things that you can get caught up on and get really frustrated. And if I can show you not to get frustrated, then I've helped out. So, screw it all the way. It's a little way this here because this is, there's no knob on the other side. And that's it. So, and then you just pull the other part right straight through, and then you go ahead and take these plates off. That's it. All right, we're back. It's the next day, and everything is dried up and hardened. Um, we also are now going to cut out the cylinder portion for the door handle. And to do that, I'm going to use a jig. Uh, you can pick these up at the home stores. This one, I think, it's come down in price a lot lately. I think it's around 20 bucks now. So essentially it cuts the hole for the, all the hardware um, and you just slip it on like that. And you kind of look at where it's gonna fall. You kind of look here 
and then kind of match it up to where it's going to go into this piece here. You want it kind of relatively in the same area, otherwise you're going to be chiseling out a lot more portion of the door jam, and you don't want to be doing that. You want to kind of keep it the same. So I think I've lined it up pretty well here. And uh, essentially the, the, the gist of this is you put two screws, which are the screws that come along with your hardware, one here and one here, and then I'll show you what happens after that. Okay, that's in there and secure. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut out the uh, hole for the cylinder, and this template will guide this uh, to go through there, and this is the bit that's gonna happen. It's got a, a self-centering bit, so when we go through there, it should guide it straight through um, in a good, good way. So we'll see how that goes. This is the smaller bit that's going to go through now, right here. screws that we're holding the, t the jig on. Oops. And then you're going to see what you're left with is perfect hole, perfectly centered for the door, and the hole perfectly found all the way through, waiting for the cylinder. Pretty good. So now uh, you'll notice why I was telling you we had to put some nails up in here. So when I've cut this, I've essentially separated it from the lower half of this wood. So this is now almost free. And there's a very thin piece up in here, but it, it needs to be stable. So using that glue and putting those nails in now, that has made that a solid piece. So hopefully you understand that why I was telling you that you should put some nails up, up here. And uh, let's go ahead and see if this fits in properly. Like a glove, look at that. So that's worked in perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, screw that in and then we'll put in the rest of the hardware and we'll finish this up. All right, so our door hardware is in. Everything's working properly. Um, next thing we have to do is we have to match up where that is going to hit. So the easiest thing that we can do is to get it right here and then mark on the inside of the door, top and bottom, of where that's going to go and then grab the strike plate and then line it up with those marks and then go back and then put your your plate there so you kind of see it's going to be off a little bit so we're going to have to chisel some of that stuff out okay so now we've chiseled that out and it should fit in there quite well like that you can see everything lines up so what i'm going to do now is actually give the door a test run with, without this in it to see how it fits. So it's in there and you see that there's a little bit of play backwards so I can actually put the strike plate just a little bit further back to give it a nice snug fit. So it works well but I think I'd like it a little tighter. Alright so the strike plate is now on. It's in there. Everything's lined up. So let's go ahead and give this a, a test close. Beautiful. Nice and tight. So everything works well. So um, I just want to thank you guys for watching the video. And be sure to comment if you have anything that helped improve the process that maybe I missed or maybe I didn't talk about. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and put it in the comment section. Um, the only thing that is left to do here right now is to fill in the spackle area right here. We'll fill that in. I'm lucky enough to have painters following up after me, so they'll take care of that. Lucky me. Um, but otherwise, um, I hope you guys take this on. It's not too hard if you take it step by step. Uh, there are some things that I have that you might not have, uh, like the high power drill, but if you use a plug-in drill to drill the hole through the door, you'll be okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a like if you did. Thanks. Bye.